In this video, we'll show you how to set up and run an Invitrogen Quantigene Plex assay in a 96 well played format. The demonstration of this assay will be using cell lysates. Please refer to the other how to videos for sample preparation and data analysis for Quantigene Plex assays. Prior to setting up and running the Quantigene Plex assay, please refer to the how to video to calibrate the shaking incubator to both 54 and 50 degrees Celsius using our temperature validation kit. The assay is completed in two days, with plate setup and overnight incubation on day one, followed by signal amplification and detection on day two. You can use either the Vortemp 56 or Thermoscientific Max-Q 4450 shaking incubator for this assay. Set and start the incubator to 54 degrees Celsius, plus or minus 1 degree Celsius. The Vortemp should be set at 600 RPM, while the Max-Q should be set at 300 RPM. Prepare a plate map that includes 3 to 4 wells for background. Remember to optimize the sample input. Begin the assay using the chosen incubator to pre-warm the lysis mixture at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, followed by gentle swirling. Store at room temperature until usage. If lysate samples are frozen, remove them from the freezer and thaw at room temperature. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Following incubation, vortex briefly if samples are in tubes, or pipette up and down five times if samples are in plates. Make sure to change tips. Leave the samples at room temperature until use. Freshly made lysates should also be kept at room temperature following their preparation. Prepare the day one reagents by removing the probe set and blocking reagent from the freezer and thawing them on ice. Vortex and centrifuge briefly and then store on ice. Place the proteinase K tube and capture beads on ice with all other reagents until use. Follow the instructions in the product user guide to prepare an appropriate volume of working bead mix. Pipette the reagents in the order that they are listed in the user guide. Vortex the beads for 30 seconds at full speed to ensure a homogeneous mixture of beads before adding them to the working bead mix. Vortex each bead mix again for 10 seconds and transfer to a reservoir using a pipette filler. Use a multi-channel pipette to pipette 20 microliters into each assay well of the round bottom hybridization plate. Now add 80 microliters of prepared lysate to each well of the hybridization plate containing the working bead mix. Make sure to change tips. The total final volume in each well will be 100 microliters. Be sure to include at least three wells for assay background. For background controls, add 80 microliters of diluted lysis mixture. There is no need to mix the contents of the well after sample addition. Remove the backing of the pressure seal, center, and place onto the hybridization plate. Use a soft rubber roller or an applicator tool to apply firm, even pressure to completely seal the plate. Ensure that all edges are properly sealed to avoid evaporation during overnight incubation. Place the hybridization plate in the shaking incubator for 18 to 22 hours. Set at 54 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degrees Celsius at 600 RPM with the Vortemp incubator or 300 RPM with the Max-Q incubator. If using a Vortemp incubator, ensure there is an inverted plate lid in place as explained by the package insert and supplemental video. Before leaving the lab, make sure the incubator is stable for overnight shaking incubation. On day two, allow enough time to warm up and calibrate the Luminex instrument 
as the LX200 and FlexMap 3D systems require 30 minutes for the lasers to warm up. Refer to the user guide for more information on instrument setup, maintenance, and software navigation for protocol and batch setup. Make sure to have the protocol and assay batch defined so that the Luminex instrument is ready to read the plate when the plate is fully processed. Set the SAPE diluent on the benchtop to bring to room temperature prior to preparing SAPE wash buffer later in the protocol. Warm the pre-amplifier, amplifier, and label probe solutions at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to dissolve any precipitates. Leave at room temperature until ready to use. Prepare the wash buffer according to the protocol in the user guide using nuclease-free water and wash buffer components 1 and 2. Remove the hybridization plate from the shaking incubator and adjust temperature to 50 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degree Celsius. Restart the shaking incubator and leave it running. Centrifuge the hybridization plate at 240 G for 1 minute at room temperature. Remove the pressure seal. Pipette up and down gently five times and then completely transfer the entire contents of each well from the hybridization plate to the magnetic separation plate, which is a flat bottom plate. Make sure to change tips between columns. Next, we will show you a basic wash protocol with the prepared wash buffer that can also be used for each step following the pre-amplifier amplifier and label probe hybridization steps. Insert the magnetic separation plate into the Invitrogen handheld magnetic plate washer. Ensure the magnetic separation plate is securely locked onto the handheld magnetic plate washer using the two securing tabs on each end of the washer. Wait one minute to allow the magnetic beads to accumulate on the bottom of each well. Remove the solution in the wells by quickly inverting the assembly over a sink or waste container and gently blot onto several layers of paper towels. Using a multi-channel pipette, add 100 microliters of 1x wash buffer into each well. Wait 15 seconds to allow the magnetic beads to accumulate on the bottom of each well. Remove the wash buffer in the wells by quickly inverting the assembly over a sink or waste container and gently blot onto several paper towels. Repeat two more times for a total of three washes. After the last wash, blot the magnetic separation plate onto several layers of paper towels to remove any residual solution. Transfer the pre-amplifier solution to a 25 milliliter reagent reservoir and pipette 100 microliters into each well using a multi-channel pipette. Seal the magnetic separation plate with a day two plate seal. Remove the magnetic separation plate from the handheld magnetic plate washer. Shake at 800 RPM for one minute at room temperature to resuspend the beads. Place the magnetic separation plate into the shaking incubator. Make sure to have an inverted plate lid in place. Incubate for one hour at 50 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree Celsius with shaking at 600 RPM. Use 300 RPM with the max Q. After pre-amplifier incubation, remove the magnetic separation plate from the shaking incubator and turn the vortemp back on. Insert the plate into the handheld magnetic plate washer, remove and discard the seal, and repeat the washing procedure with wash buffer as shown previously. Repeat these steps for the addition of the amplifier and the label probe solutions. Make sure to wash with wash buffer after the incubation is completed for each of these reagents. With five minutes left of the label probe incubation step, prepare the SAPE working reagent by briefly vortexing the SAPE concentrate. 
Briefly centrifuge to collect the contents at the bottom of the tube. In a 15 milliliter tube, add 36 microliters of SAPE to 12 milliliters of SAPE diluent to make the SAPE working reagent for a full 96 well plate. Scale accordingly if running a partial plate. Vortex for 15 seconds to mix and protect from light. After label probe incubation and wash step, add 100 microliters of the freshly prepared working SAPE reagent. Seal the magnetic separation plate with a day two plate seal. Remove the magnetic separation plate from the handheld magnetic plate washer. Cover or wrap in foil to protect from light and shake at 800 RPM for one minute, followed by 600 RPM for 30 minutes. After the 30 minute SAPE incubation, remove the magnetic separation plate from the plate shaker. Insert the plate into the handheld magnetic plate washer. Remove the plate seal and repeat the washing procedure, but this time using the SAPE wash buffer. Allow the plate to sit for one minute on the magnet before the first flick over a sink. And then for 15 seconds after each wash with SAPE wash buffer addition, repeat for a total of three washes. Finally, add 130 microliters of SAPE wash buffer to each assay well using a multi-channel pipette. Seal the magnetic separation plate with a day two plate seal. Remove the magnetic separation plate from the handheld magnetic plate washer. Cover or wrap in foil to protect from light and shake at 800 RPM for three minutes at room temperature. Read plate immediately on a Luminex instrument. Thank you for watching this video. To find out more information about Quantagene Plex assays, visit thermofisher.com forward slash Quantagene.